Good morning, guys. I got a little bit of a weird one today. You find myself on the other side of the country. I'm over here at Sewell Motor Coach in Auto Mart at Harrodsburg, Kentucky, because I was asked by Doug Sewell a few weeks ago if I wouldn't mind coming out here and doing a few inspections for him. If you guys watch my channel, you know that maybe I am a little bit inclined to adventure and road trips. But Doug did throw a curveball at me the day before I was supposed to fly out. Rather than flying straight to Kentucky and coming straight to the dealership and doing some inspections, he asked me if I wouldn't mind doing a small detour through Orlando, Florida. Well, my ride's here. It's not very often you get picked up from an airport in a 2022 Dutch Star, but here we are. Uh, and meet him there. Do a quick inspection on this 2015 Anthem from Integra. He had just made a deal the day before about picking up this 2022 Dutch Star. So his original plans of picking up this one kind of fell through. He hoped that I could do an extended test drive on it as part of my inspection. Thank you so much. Thank you, Doug. Okay. This is where I say goodbye to Doug. <laughs> we part ways at this point. Hopefully we meet again in Harrodsburg, Kentucky. Welcome back to Kentucky. Kind of feels like I was just here like a month ago. Definitely sure is still beautiful here. Ice and green. That's the third time we're making it over to Auto Mart Sewell Motor Coach here in Harrodsburg, Kentucky. So obviously I said yes to that adventure too. And I hope that explains why I'm not quite clean shaven anymore. So I've already been on a couple day adventure driving this thing from Florida to Harrodsburg, Kentucky. I got it here yesterday. Although it was an incredibly rainy trip, it was nice to be driving this Anthem. Now this Anthem was a beautiful coach. And I'm sure we'll go ahead and take a look at it later because it was definitely a good way to travel the US. So my current problem is I'm not quite sure what Doug has in store for me today. So I need to go check in with him. Now the good news is he did give me heads up enough that I packed a few of the essential tools I'll need for my inspection, including my hat. It's supposed to be sunny, but it looks like it's going to rain here again. He's got a lot of nice coaches here, and I need to find out what he wants me to do. I'm mostly here for the adventure. All right, let's see. Hey, there he is. Hey there, Doug. Hi. Good to finally see you again. You too, sir. Welcome. I was just telling everybody that you must be one of the best salesmen ever. Not uh, just a good guy because somehow you convinced me to come over here and I don't even know what I'm doing. Long way from home, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you had me, uh, yeah, you sent me all the way to Orlando to pick up that anthem. Oh. And we drove it uh, all the way over how here. Was, how... Very rainy, very wet, but <laughs> the anthem rode really nice. I had no issues with it. Nice coach, yes, sir. Absolutely. So did you have any idea of maybe what you'd like me to do while yeah, I'm over here well, in Kentucky? We've got, we just got in a bunch of new uh, new inventory. Yeah, I saw a little bit of it. I yeah, saw that Dutch star. we got more coming. I've got two or three Dutch Actually, two stars. Dutch stars, right? Three, actually. One of them's not here yet. I oh. don't think it'll be here by the time you have to leave, unfortunately. But uh, I've got a Safari Simba, 22 Dutch stars. I think it's the only one in the country even available. I saw that. New or used, uh, so yeah. Your guys over there detailing are doing a good job. Yep, yep, so we're, we're in the process. So yeah, we'd love for you to do some inspections for us and let's see how let's see how it goes. All right, I appreciate it. So you want me to start with? Uh, let's do the Sar Safari Simba first. Safari Simba, yeah, nice, there you go. That's a really nice coat. No 2008. Paint, no paint checking. I saw uh, it out there. Really, really clean coach. All right, well, I'll go take a look at it. We'll do an inspection and uh, hopefully it'll Really easy. I'll do what I do best and make a mess. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Doug. All right, well, there's the Simba. I'm going to go ahead and move it over to the other side of the shop so I can get some water on it. But first, got to make some squeaky noises. Got my toolbox here. Oh, there you go. Filed perfectly. I think they just picked this 2008 Simba up because it still has a dealer plate in it. But let's go see. This is 2008, so this should be, even though it's a Safari, it should be a Monaco Safari. So in a previous video, uh, I explained that Monaco purchased Safari and Beaver. And the easiest way to find out if it's a Monaco Safari or a Monaco Beaver is to check the VIN number. So if we just come over here to the data plate, and we look at the VIN number right there, it says 1RF. 
one RF is going to indicate that it is a Monaco product. But of course, we probably knew that because it was a 2008 and Monaco acquired Safari Motor Coach and Beaver in about 2002. But let me get this moved real fast. Looks like they haven't even had a chance to clean it up completely. That's how new it is. That give me an opportunity to show the most important question everybody's going to ask me. It has 62,887 miles. I'm trying to get in the habit of finding the mileage out for you guys. You don't have to search the comments to find out how many miles are on it. I'm trying. I'm getting better. So with the moved over here, I'll get the slide out rooms out. Looks like there's at least two. One. Two. And then that way we can do the roof inspection and take a look at all the awnings. So this has the same standard Monaco monitor panel that you're going to see on most Holiday Ramblers, Monaco's. But I still have to decide what road means half the time. Road is the driver's side. Curb is obviously the passenger side. But seriously, even after 20 some odd years, I have to think driver, I have to think road. That's... I'm sitting in the driver's seat that's on the driver's that's the driver's side then curb well I don't know I mean curb is on the is that the concrete is that the sidewalk uh no that's the passenger side where the curb would be when you're getting out I mean why don't we just say drivers and passenger sides so it could be uh worse you could have a new mar that has ds and ods which can be quite confusing new mar is the door side and the opposite of the door side sometimes people say driver's side opposite of the driver's side but I mean why do I have to explain ODS to people during walkthroughs? Come on, Newmar. Just just say passenger side. But I don't know if you guys notice right here. This one has a Victron inverter remote panel in it. Doug's guys just installed that because the Magnum inverter that was in here went out and Doug was interested to see what I thought about Victron. But apparently he didn't watch my video where I installed two Victron inverters on a country coach bus conversion. Supply chain issues are still a thing and the magnum inverter that was in here went bad and they couldn't re and they could not locate a replacement so they went with Victron. But of course Victron is kind of the gold standard of inverters anyways. So that's a nice upgrade this uh, future Simba owner got. I'll take a quick sneak peek at it. Yeah, that's a nice guy right there. You leave that in the on mode. A little bit more durable too. It's a nice install. Those guys just do good work. If I remember, I'll try to put a link to that video where I clumsily make my way through the installation of a kind of a complicated system. But like all roof inspections, I do like to make sure that I use the provided ladder if I can. Let's see, get all the uh, awnings out too. Then I'll just extend the patio awning. Hopefully it doesn't fall off on me. Doesn't look like it's going to. And it looks like somebody added extra screws anyways to it. Yeah. Look at that. Three screws I can see. Now, this is a Monaco product, so I do try to point out that uh, the roof line right here where the radius meets the sidewall, it's always a good idea to do a visual inspection from the ground to make sure, to make sure that the hardware hasn't broken and it's not pulling away from the sidewalls. Previous owner installed the LED light strip right there, so if it's wavy, that's what it is. And that's just the controller for that 12, that LED light strip. That's just aftermarket. Now I'll go ahead and check up here too. Everything looks pretty good. And this does have an entry door carefree awning. So we just go ahead and slide up the lock right on this side, out of the way. Kind of deploys a little bit like a window awning. Grab that strap right there. Step hidden behind the arm right there is another arm that pops out like a kickstand. It's definitely harder to do one handed, but it can be done. There's just a little tiny slot right there that that tab fits in. And now it's deployed. Now, before we get on the roof, uh, I did notice it has a Norcold refrigerator in it. So, there's one thing I always want to do on an inspection with the Norcold refrigerator for my liability purposes is to look in the back section here. And make sure that I see that recall kit been done on it. Temperature sensor is installed, but more importantly, this isn't bypassed. So it looks like it's been installed. So now I don't have to worry about my liability or Doug's liability. It's already done. Let's go ahead and get on the roof finally. The ladder feels nice and strong. It's not loose. Really good there. 
I will notice the rear cap does have peeling clear coat on it, which of course is a almost a universal find on RVs after three or four years in the sun. And of course, speaking of the sun, looks like it came out today. So I did throw the hat on. I'll go ahead and take a look at the clearance lights, make sure they're not cracked. They don't appear to be cracked. Oh, no, we're good. Very nice. And then I will walk the rear cap right here. Now these, uh, the roof is riveted onto the framing underneath because this is a Monaco design. This is still a one piece fiberglass roof. I do like what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a lot of signs of maintenance being performed on this. But although it looks like metal, this is fiberglass roof. I didn't see, feel, see or feel any looseness right here. You can kind of see the, the rivets, rivet heads that are in that tape. Now this tape is installed by Monaco or Safari when it was built. And what I assumed happened right here is going in and out of the ladder enough that it started to tear the tape that they put there. Now the tape that was up there when somebody was walking on the tape. So they've just probably added more re roof repair tape, a little bit more durable stuff here. And that's all I'm seeing. I don't see any signs of actual damage. Likely the tape was just torn. We'll go ahead and take a look over there. That scene looks good. We look good over here, except for all the peeling clear again. That's pretty common. But on this one-piece fiberglass roof, it looks like they're using a Dicor or Dicor similar roof product on here. And it looks like it'll be in pretty good shape. There's just going to be a cable entry port for the coax cable that was up here. You can see it traces all the way up there. So that's definitely aftermarket. We'll take a look over here. More peeling clear. Take a look down the sidewall. I don't see any issues. This window awning fabric looks dirty, but no real issues to it. The ceiling looks good. Over here at the rear AC, I will try to move it lightly with my foot without breaking anything. There is a crack right there, but not that important of a deal. I did see some signs of maintenance up here. Now this is the uh, remnants of the old roof tape that was up here. It's a tar-based tape. That's there. It is difficult to take off. So somebody has replaced the skylight on here. And that's a good sign. It indicates that they have been taking care of things. Looks like they did a pretty good job. They even riveted it down and screwed it down. Because the framing is actually... Un so underneath this roof deck is going to be styrofoam, then aluminum framing. So it's actually about an inch and a half of a thermal break between the framing and the roof deck for insulation purposes. So it's kind of hard to mount things to these roofs properly because this roof itself is, is uh, a little bit more free-floating. It might move around on you as you walk. I follow this bedroom slide-out topper. I will come to this right there. It looks like there is a hole. I would recommend replacing this topper fabric. I'm not seeing any other signs of distress. This sewer vent. It's, the plastic is deteriorated, but it's not broken. Sealant looks good. This refrigerator roof vent. Everything looks good underneath, and we look good. We have a Max Air vent cover over this vent. The good news is it looks like it was installed properly, so water can get out from underneath there. Like I said, I've never had very good luck taking these off without breaking the vent itself. We come over here. Maybe there's a little bit of cracking in the sealant right there. I could recommend resealing that. But again, another sign, this is a brand new slat out topper fabric that's just been replaced. So somebody's keeping up on the maintenance here. Another Max Air vent cover. Looks like it's, that was installed correctly. So water can drain out if it does get back underneath there. This radio antenna, man, that looks like the factory installed it originally. This looks just as good as the day it left the factory. And we'll take a look at the patio awning fabric because it's out and I don't see any issues with it. That's a pretty good material they have on there. Now this front AC, you notice this AC shroud is completely different. It's uh, got a, a much better mold to it and it's shiny compared to that one over there. So I would guess somebody has, has replaced this front AC. Make sure that they made sure it was tight and they did.
Now on these ACs on the Simba, the condensate from the AC was not plumbed through the roof to drain on the ground. So it looks like somebody added a little bit of a angle aluminum. They didn't screw it down, they just glued it down, which is a nice thing to do, to redirect that as a gutter so that when it makes a puddle right there, it completely misses the slide out and goes over the front. That's pretty ingenious to do it that way. And they didn't put holes in the roof. I really liked whoever worked on this. They did a good job. If we come over here, it's gonna have the original Weingard crank up TV antenna on it. Looks like somebody's probably resealed it from the factory. This is just where the cable's going through. Looks like that plate back there on the rear of the, the motorhome. But they did upgrade the antenna itself to a King control antenna. I'm not seeing any issues with the radius on this side. Even the paint looks pretty good. There's maybe a little bit of spider checking, but that's gonna be very common on fiberglass radiuses. Nothing to worry about. It's just on the surface level. It's not a waterproofing issue. It's still very thick and very strong. The stitching on this entry door awning and the fabric itself is probably at the end of its life. I'd recommend a new fabric. And this front cap, believe it or not, doesn't have peeling paint on it. Huh. Take a look at the clearance lights. Sorry about that, guys. I know it makes a lot of people a little bit queasy, but I do have to look at them. And then this radio antenna is facing the wrong way, but it's secured and probably works just fine that way. Here's the Weingard Traveler that somebody had installed at some point because it did not come with this originally. This is a Dish Network one. You can just tell by the reflector itself. Cable to the front TV, and then we already saw the cable to the back TV. Last thing to do is walk the front cap seam. I don't feel it loose at all, but I will note that somebody's done the maintenance on this and changed out the original tape that the factory installed to a newer, more durable tape. It's probably not the right term. The, the metal tape is probably the most durable because it's not gonna fall apart in the sun, but it does start to, the, the tar-based adhesive does start to fail over time and it starts to curl up on the edges. So maybe that's what's going on over here. Somebody just went ahead and replaced that tape right there anyways. And the tape itself, again, is flashing. It's not really a lap seal. There is sealant all the way underneath that. Then they rivet it down. The uh, tape is just going to help redirect water all the way around, which is true about all lap sealant. Lap sealant should never be used as the primary seal source. If your lap sealant is cracking, go ahead and clean it and reseal it. But if the component is leaking, you need to remove uh, the component and find out why it's leaking. The lap sealant shouldn't be the reason why it's leaking. There it was, guys, a 2008 Simba Class A diesel pusher. Just finished up the inspection on this one-piece fiberglass roof. There were a few minor issues, mostly gonna be some of the fabrics are torn, uh, but the roof shows all indications that it's been well-maintained and taken care of, which is something I always like to see as an inspector. I'll go ahead and finish up my notes, get down on the ground, and then uh, finish up the interior inspection and hopefully have time to take you guys through it on the inside. Doug did drag me all the way out here to do a inspection. I wanna make sure I'm doing a good job. All right, I finished doing my inspection and making all my notes. This thing's a little bit dirty. Now, before I take you through it, I need to check with Doug and make sure that he's fine with me taking it through before it's been completely detailed. But I don't even think you'll notice, but I'll try to talk him into it. I can't find him. Hey, there you are. Yes, sir. Hey, Doug, I had a question for you. Yep. Uh, I'm done with the inspection, and I know it's kind of dirty. Do you yep. mind if I take the guys through or take everybody through and take a look at it? Yeah, no, it, we haven't detailed the coach yet. Uh, it's clean on the outside. Well, it's got some dust and stuff on the inside. We actually been doing a little bit of work to it, you know. But uh, yeah, take them through it. Show I'm, I'm full disclosure. Show them what it is. It's clean, but it's dirty. If that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. I understand. That's why I wanted to make sure you were okay with it before I showed everybody on the inside. Oh yeah, absolutely, no problem. I right, appreciate it. Yep. All right, I got the approval from Doug. As long as you understand, this will be detailed. So don't worry about it if it's dirty. Now, this 2008 Simba is a short entry-level diesel. It's 2008 Safari Simba. It is a Monaco product, and it, it will equate to the same level as maybe a Monaco Diplomat or a Holiday Rambler Endeavor. But this is still 
an absolutely beautiful motorhome. But we'll go ahead and start right here. The drivers and passenger seats are in really good shape. This isn't leather, but it is vinyl. And I like this texture in the middle. You'd think that, I haven't seen this very often, but the seats are not worn. They're in good shape. They're not peeling. And even this side armrest is good. Uh, both the passenger and driver seats are power seats. And of course they do swivel. Now this may look like rolled vinyl flooring, but it's actually interlocking pergo type flooring made to look like tile. So it's definitely much more durable and better product than a rolled vinyl flooring, but it's not going to be a ceramic or a hardwood floor. But as we look over in the driver's compartment, this does have true hydraulic leveling on it. Now it only has three jacks, so it has a center jack and then the two rear ones, which I found to be a little bit more useful personally. Again, we're back to rocker switches that I like. Six-speed Allison transmission. I already pre-wired for the Roadmaster braking system for a tow vehicle. It's got a very viewable dash. The backup camera is still original, and believe it or not, that guy's working flawlessly. Now, kind of surprising to me, it does have a one-piece windshield on it. Dang, that's a nice-looking Dutch star. <laughs> uh, and even has these uh, shades on either side for the driver and passenger, which is really nice for when you're driving down the road. It's even better, I think, because they're manual. Like we saw on the outside, it does have two slide outs. So the driver's side front slide out will have the sofa. Again, this sofa is just a vinyl sofa. It's not peeling, it's not tearing. It's still the original one that matches the driver's and passenger seats and it's in good shape. This is a hide-a-bed though. If you take the cushions off, it's just gonna flip out like a normal residential hide-a-bed. Could be about a full size. So that's a nice feature to have already. The dinette table obviously does not turn into a bed. It does pull out. The countertop itself, uh, it's a Formica a laminate countertop, but it does have a solid surface Corian banding on it. Of course, the day-night shades are just pleated day-night shades. Another thing you'll find on these entry-level diesel pushers is the cabinet doors themselves are solid wood. They're in really good shape, but the cabinet faces themselves and a lot of the trim is gonna be engineered lumber but sometimes that engineered lumber is a lot more stable and lasts longer. You can see all the cabinetry above the drivers and passengers area. It still has the original home theater system in it and it actually works, but they did upgrade the front TV to a more modern Samsung TV. Now across from this sofa, you'll find a second sofa. Now this sofa also turns into a bed, but this is just a jackknife sofa. I don't think at that bed out, you cannot extend this bed but you could still sleep on the couch. This is of course just a fabric sofa. This is one of those uh, things that probably needs to be cleaned. But other than that, I don't see any tears on it. Even though it's a laminate countertop on the dinette area, the galley has a solid surface Corian countertop. The sink covers are solid surface and even has a countertop extension that pops up. And I say it a lot in my videos, I am a fan of the asymmetrical galley sinks. That way you could theoretically leave this sink cover on, move the faucet over there. You still have a working galley sink, but you have additional countertop space over there. Underneath this cover right there is a three burner propane stove top. Now, of course, this does have the rotating spark ignition. Now, rather than having a crummy LP oven down below, you have good drawers. And these are ball bearing guides on it, and it is cabinet grade uh, plywood. It's not just pressed wood. But instead of that oven down below, you have a convection oven microwave above. But this is a new Frigidaire Galley series. So one less thing you have to worry about, it's already been replaced. You have a new inverter, new front AC, new microwave, and even a newer front TV. Now next to the stove top is gonna to be the refrigerator. Now this is a four door Norcold two way refrigerator, both propane and electric. I did just turn it on a few hours ago and it's nice and cold up there saw that the recall has been done and even these door panels these are solid wood doors even like the faux wainscoting that's in the galley area right here as we push our way back through this hallway there is a pantry right next to the refrigerator and that's where the central vacuum cleaner hookup is going to be now i don't normally go through the outside compartments very much as a short class a diesel pusher and so i did want to point out that there's not a lot of storage, but it is a nice pass-through storage bay. So you can go to the other side and get access to that same storage compartment. The water compartments is laid out very well and very accessible. And this does have propane on it. So you're not gonna have a storage in that door right there either. 
And then before I push my way back through the hallway, there is a, uh, I, I did want to point out the decor of the wall panel in here. It looks pretty good. It's aged very well. That's just going to be the fantastic vent control for the galley fantastic vent. We already saw the monitor panel right here. It does have two roof ACs on it, and there's that new Victron remote panel. Even on the entry-level diesel, they gave you energy management systems on it. So on this short diesel, you have this central hallway area. But I do like this. They put the washer-dryer combination unit in right here. And this is a newer Splendid. So some, this is not the original one that came with it. So it's another thing you don't have to worry about. And it does work. Directly across from that is going to be the bathroom. This is a central bathroom. Just has a porcelain Thetford uh, gravity toilet on it. Back to a laminate countertop in the bathroom area. Still has a Corian trim on it. It's in good shape. Still have the original wallpaper border trim. And instead of a medicine cabinet above, you just have a mirror and then more storage right above the toilet. Right across from the toilet, which actually there's a lot of room right here, so you don't have to squeeze your way past the toilet to get to the shower. Like a lot of coaches, little latch right there. This is a real glass shower door, and this is a rear fiberglass shower stall. It's a more of a rectangle shape. It does have the skylight above. It's a really decent sized residential quality shower. Let's go ahead and uh, step up maybe six inches. And I'm six foot, so I didn't hit my head going in. Hey. I'd say I have a little bit of elbow room and shoulder room in here. And yeah, wow, that's a foot and a half to the bottom of that skylight. So if you're tall, you'll fit in here. Now as we exit, didn't have to duck either. Well done. As we go out of the bathroom, the previous owner did put a bracket right up there so that this bathroom door did turn into a nice partition. I see some of the most clever things that I would never have thought about as an RV technician. And as we go past the double pocket doors, I will point out these are actually solid wood too. That we do make the transition from the laminate flooring to carpet in the bedroom. This is a north-south bed. It is a queen size bed, but it is a sleep number bed. There is storage underneath. And you can kind of see the central vacuum cleaner, the folding chairs for the dinette, and that sleep number uh, pump. It's a newer system on it. But as we go past into the bedroom, we'll see that we do have Corian solid surface countertops in the bedroom here. Nice drawers, a nice closet in here. So on the short diesel, you aren't stuck with a closet in the hallway. So that's nice. It has a legitimate headboard on the back wall and not a window with all the window trims that you interfere with with your pillow. So more storage above there, but this is gonna be the electrical center. There's a ceiling fan here. You'll see the bedroom TVs mounted on the wall. I would probably upgrade this one. It's probably close to the original TV. And as we make our way around over here, you'll see even the nightstands are solid surface Corian countertops. And they mounted the DVD and satellite receivers out here. So that goes from there all the way to there. That's pretty good viewing from the bed. But thanks a lot for joining me on the uh, inspection of this 2008 Simba. That's fun to share with you guys. I haven't done this in Kentucky, so I'm a little out of sorts if I've been rambling too much. But this is a pretty nice unit. It's very livable, very usable. And some of the features I didn't point out that I like the most about it is, it is uh, laminate flooring from the entryway all the way to the bedroom. And this is 2008, kind of before that trim became really popular. It has the two sofas. I like that galley setup over here. And of course the north-south bed in the back. It has a brand new inverter, a new microwave, new washer and dryer, uh, and everything else is in pretty good shape. But there's one more thing that I didn't kind of point on on the outside. I don't know if you guys noticed, the sidewalls, I didn't see any checking on that. The paint on the front cap, I almost feel like it was just repainted, but also has a 3M shield on it. So if they did that, they spent a lot of money up here. And the headlights I did notice were new too. I know the next question is how are the tires? These tires are from 2020 on the steer, but the rear ones are from 2015. And of course the most common question I'll get is, well, how much is this thing? I don't know how much it is. I might have to go talk to Doug about it. Hey Doug, sorry to bother you one more time. Just in case, cause I always will get the comment. 
what is that actually selling for? Uh, or is it for sale? I don't even know if it's for yeah, sale. No, we, uh, we, we just got it finished through uh, some service and stuff that it needed. Eighty nine nine ninety five. It's an 08 model. I think it's got reasonable miles, maybe in the 40s, 50,000 miles, somewhere in that range. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's on our website, SewellMotorCoach.com. And also, I'm going to do a walkthrough video on it. So, if you jump over to my YouTube channel, you'll see a full walkthrough video kind of explaining some of the the features and, and whatnot so which you're you're gonna do way better than i am on that so all right well i appreciate it doug i know you're a busy guy i'll yeah. just get back inside then. all right so there you guys go you got the price there if you have any questions about it i'll leave the information in the description and hopefully that answered everybody's comments so that was a pretty fun adventure that we've gone on don't forget that doug did start his own youtube channel at sewell motor coach i'll put a link in the description but also don't forget to uh take a look at my good friend andrew Steele over there at rving with andrew Steele. Andrew and his channel is pretty much how this whole adventure started anyways and how uh, we were introduced. Thanks a lot for watching guys. I don't know what's going to come next, but I'm sure it will be fun. Now before I leave you guys too much, there was one thing that I didn't point out on that video about Monaco, about finding the best Monacos. I said something about the driver's side front compartment. On these entry level Monaco diesel pushers, if it has this plastic ABS door on it usually with a uh, one or three holes in it and it looks like this this is gonna be a true monocle product so those are not part of that uh, that video that I was talking about one that has this panel again this is gonna be a true monocle chassis that'll be a good one to look for it won't be the max force chassis but thanks a lot for watching guys because I was contacted by Dual... <clears throat> now naturally, I'm pretty inclined to adventure. Uh, now naturally, I am pretty... Now naturally, I... <clears throat> of course, we probably knew that because it was 2008 and Monaco and... So this 2008... Mo <clears throat> so this two... So, this so that's another thing that's what... That <clears throat> Directly now, directly next now, next to the. <clears throat>in really good condition. I don't see anything wrong with the fabric. They are power and heated seats. It does have motorized day night privacy shades in the front. It has a very useful smart wheel on it that has radio controls on it too. And it is a hands free Bluetooth enabled radio with backup camera built into it. Oh, is a dedicated monitor with side view cameras and the backup camera. And above that, you'll find the over the road TV. All the wood will be solid wood cabinet doors, solid wood trim, a solid wood cabinetry. But on the floor is going to be some really elegant, gorgeous ceramic and stone tile with inlaid glass and stone tile border. The driver's side front slide out, you will find the main TV with a Bose sound bar below. Electric fireplace down below that. This recliner can be moved wherever you want it to be. The dinette table. Along with all countertops will be a solid surface Corian countertop made to mimic the look of stone. It does extend out for additional seating. And behind that you'll find the Frigidaire Residential 110 refrigerator with freezer drawer down below. From that slide out, on this other front slide out we'll find the most versatile sofa. It has a recliner built into it there. But it has this extra sofa cushion right there because it extends out. That cushion down below gets put right there. And that extra cushion becomes a seat back cushion for a very large wraparound sofa. But this is still a bed. And this inner spring mattress also has a top pillow top that is an air mattress. The galley, now the galley does have a countertop extension. Just pull straight out on that. Asymmetric under countertop mounted stainless steel sink. A two burner electric stove top with convection oven microwave above. And drawer dishwasher from Fisher Pykel down below. We'll make our way to the bathroom. Has a double vanity set up for his and her. Now back in here, we're going to find the actual water closet with a 
porcelain macerating toilet, a large corner shower with tile shower walls. We make our way to the last two slide outs. There's a king size sleep number bed and this bedroom slide. Across from the bed on the last slide out will be the bedroom TV, the dressers, and next to it is a stack washer and dryer above. And past these sliding mirror closet doors, big surprise, a cedar lined closet. So a 2015 Anthem from Integra, luxury class A diesel pusher motorhome. Good morning guys. Got pretty stormy in Georgia last night. Unfortunately, it's still pretty stormy out there. But I can go get breakfast. It's less than five hours to our destination in Harrodsburg. But I think I do have time to go get some provisions. The bare essentials, of course. Second thought, I might move the motorhome a little bit closer. That uh, storm is uh, a little bit persistent. Hey, we got the jacks up. all aired up and I do have fuel and even diesel exhaust fluid which I did last night so I wouldn't have to uh, worry about it in the morning yeah Well, that almost worked to keep me dry. Guess it's a good thing I moved a little bit. But I have the essentials, and it's a less than five hours to my destination. Might be a little bit longer in this rain. Oof. Wish me luck. There I go.